What is up, YouTube? James back here. Welcome back to another episode of VGC 2019 Bex Rick Battles. Today, we are going to be using Nyoto's World Championship team with Groudon, Lunala, Stakataka, Incineroar, Salamence, and Tapu Fini, the team that ended up winning the Pokemon World Championship. If you want to see a team report, there is one in the description down below alongside Nyoto's Twitter if you want to go give him a follow. But otherwise, let's get started and play some games. So, really excited. Uh, really, really excited to play more with this team because I want to learn more about this team. I want to figure out what are its best options. What does it struggle against? Because I feel like I know what it struggles against, but like I want to know how to fix those situations. So we'll see how this goes. I'm hoping, I'm hoping to do better in this episode and hopefully score a few more wins with this team. But let us see how this is gonna go. Uh, people know this team. This team doesn't have the best uh, out of pressure situations, I feel like. Like, if this team is getting pressured, I feel like it doesn't have the best tools to get out of it. Which means every single raid you make counts. Like, it really does. Because I feel like this team playing safely isn't exactly the best option. Because you can get overwhelmed quite easily. So I feel like this team read based. And you have to get a lot of those reads right. Like, a huge majority of those. Otherwise, this team can get really overwhelmed. So, we'll see how this goes. Hopefully, we're going to be able to pick up a few wins. I don't mind if we get some losses, though. I have scored some losses. I'll, a few of them have helped me realize what I need to do better with this team and what kind of plays that I can make. So, I'm happy with those kinds of losses. But, of course, we would like to score some wins, too. That is something that is very nice. But, will we be able to find an opponent? That is the big question because I don't know why. When I was playing... To try out this team earlier. So easy to find about it. It was so easy. Now, it's like a dead zone. I don't get it. Where is everyone? It's only been like... Uh, it has... It's been like only an hour since I... For like an hour since I stopped laddering. Uh, for fun. Then I go to record this episode since I feel like I'm ready to uh, play more with this team. And then no one's online. But we'll be right back with the first game of today's episode. All right, we got Angel from Spain. Why is my webcam not working? <laughs> like my webcam's stuck. Uh, I'll fix that. Let's see, these work. Come unplugged or something. All right, let's see if that works. Okay, there we go. I'm back. <laughs> okay, Seismitoad with Ray Ogre, Hapu Koko, Celesteela, and Incineroar. <sighs> this match was going to be annoying, I can tell. Um, Salamence, Lunala is what the report said is the best lead. I don't know, I feel like I lead Salamence, Lunala, but I feel like the players are always prepared for this lead, so I'm not sure if it is the best lead. But it's definitely, I think, something uh, uh, that can be worked with. Groudon is really good against my opponent's team if I play right. Seismitoad's actually kind of a threat with Swiss Swim. If it is the Swiss Swim Seismitoad, because Earth Power into Ground is going to do a lot of damage. Um, we'll see, though. We'll see. Incineroar's not that great. Incineroar's actually pretty good, but like it just. I feel like I need Feeny in general, because Electric Terrain is scary, and I need a Water Resist that's not Groudon, or I lose the game to the Kyogre, because if I switch in Groudon and then Ray comes in. I just lose, so uh, yeah, I have to bring Feeny and I have to bring Ground. Like I feel like you're forced to bring that. Uh, this, these four in the matchup. I face a lot of Ray Ogres though. With this team, I face a lot of Ray Ogres. I don't know why. It was like forty-two weeks that I recorded Bex Big Bows, which were the previous uh, like fourteen episodes you saw. I didn't face like many Ray Ogres. Now I'm facing all of them. I don't know why. Coco plus the Ray will lead. Okay, Salamence and Lunala. Um, I'm gonna do what I did in the first episode, I think, because, like, there's no Trick Room that I really have to worry about, and Tailwind's really good against my opponent's team. Like, really good. Like, my opponent doesn't have a way that really stops it. So, I don't know. It was Electrium, so it could be something else. It might be better just to double protect here and scout if this is, like, Twinkle Tackle on the uh, top of Coco. As long as there's no source in its turn one immediately predicting this, I should be fine. But I want to scout what kind of Coco it is, like what it goes for. Uh, what does a Ray do? I feel like the Ray would switch out, but I don't think that 
hurts me too, too much. Uh, maybe I should just Moon Geist, but I don't want Z move in the minus one Dragon Stun doing a lot to Lunala immediately. Because Lunala is good in this matchup. My goal here is to knock out Rayquaza because it's the only Mon that is very annoying for me to pivot against. Because if I get rid of Rayquaza, like, it frees up Groudon immensely since I don't have to worry about airlock switches. And thankfully, my opponent Mega Balls, which means I don't have to worry about airlock switches anymore. So, uh, Delta Stream is still something that my opponent can make as a play. But, yeah, I think I'll take that trade. And no protects from my opponent's side. We will double protect. We'll scout what my opponent wants to do. Bolt switch into Lunala. And Dranson. Oh... Yeah, that was a play. That was a play. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad I double protected because that would have been bad. It's the ghost one this time. It was Shadow Claw, it's either A, B, or Bandit, right? I'm gonna double edge. I want to let the Coco slot and go grout on here. Ah oh, no 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 no! I want a hyper voice. Oh please make it, make it! I don't know if I did. <laughs> okay, I did. Yeah, switch it worked. Okay, so my opponent makes the same play again. I catch the volt switch and I get a bit of chip. I don't know if this is gonna really work because my opponent has multiple plays. Like, here's the thing. I feel so limited against this. Like, I have to get every read right, but there's so many possibilities my opponent can make here. Especially with Shadow Claw. Because that changes the matchup immensely. My opponent can go for Gleam here. Can go for, um... Yeah, like, you can go for Gleam. You can go for uh, Volt Switch into my Mens. It's just really annoying. Uh, I want to Hyper Voice just to see if this is a... Uh... Yeah, you see... Let's check the tackle. Well, at least I don't have to worry about that, that option to Lunala. I don't think this is a bad situation, but it's not a good one, obviously. Yeah, it's in the men's. The men's goes down, not much I can do. Shadow Claw's gonna come out. Ah, oh, my opponent read that too. Oh, that's so bad. That is so bad. Uh, I'm going Lunala here. I got a retreat to Groudon too, which sucks for me. Okay, that has to be AV, right? This was like the worst. Because I avoided the Shadow Claw trap turn one, but I just got trapped turn two. This is what I... This is what I've been meant by put in poor positions. I have been put in these really bad positions with Coco and Ray. Like these, they always like lead this. And then I'm in these terrible positions where I have to call the plays right or I just lose. And it hurts not knowing the Z move because Gigavolt Havoc in a Bandit Dragon Sand KO'd the Lunala sometimes. And I have to read what kind of Rayquaza item they are, which is a problem with Mega Rayquaza in the first place. Why it's so annoying to deal with. Um, but yeah, we'll go Feeny here. Gotta go Feeny here. Gotta hope. You're probably just Volt Switching and Shadow Clawing anyway. But like, what other play do I have? Do I go for Dragon Claw and risk my... I don't think I risk my... Uh, I don't think I ever, ever risk my Grout on there. Um, Let's see. Seismic Toad coming out. Okay. Which is an interesting play. Oh, it's Earth Power. Okay. That's doable. Trick room goes up, which is good. I'm going to go for a double up in the ray since it's probably a salt vest. Shadow Claw only runs like a salt vest. Um, I'm going to hope that I can actually do some damage. I don't even know how much this does, like realistically. I'm guessing it doesn't pick up a KO. Like I really don't think it will, but I need as much damage as possible. So I'll go for a Moon Guys Beam. I'll go for the Z and see if it does. Kyra has to be the last Pokemon in the back. I don't think my opponent would bring anything else. I don't think it can be the uh, 
Incineroar. Was it Incineroar team? Yeah, it was. It's Incineroar Cell Steel, right? As the other two options. I don't think you brought any of those because I felt like you would bring Incineroar here, if anything. Because um, you need Kyogre in the back. You've been playing like this, Kyogre. So I'm going to go for this Z, Moon Guys Beam, and hope I can get the KO. This time it's out slow. Like, really slow. What? It's mint speed? And it gets a special defense drop. Uh, special defense drop's annoying because if I even, even if I'm able to knock out, like, dealing with the Seismitoad's a problem. Alright, so Seismitoad with Earth Power, probably a water type move. I see a wind. I can't tell what kind of Seismitoad this is. How much does this do to Rai? Hoping for a good amount. Oh, that did a lot, actually. Alright, we knock out the raid, which is good, because that's a problem Pokemon. I'll definitely take that trade. So we knock out Ray, that's really solid. Why'd my Feeny have to get the special defense drop though? Kyogre gets to come in and then I'm too killed by Earth Power. Coco? What? What? Why Coco? I double up a slot here and I have to call it right. I feel like Coco is the one that's threatened the most. So I'm gonna just attempt a Moon Guys Beam and Nature's Man is the Seismito- I'm just surprised, why Coco come in? I know it's Z. I guess you don't want to go Kyogre here because I could just go Groudon, but I feel like your Seismito just stretches an Earth Power if even if I try to go to Groudon. Because if I go to Groudon and you get the Earth Power read right, you just do a lot of work. While Coco is just threatened by both my Pokemon. Like a double up would KO to Coco. Which is why I'm surprised my opponent brought it in. Um, stays in with both. Wow, Earth Powers, the Beanie. Yeah, that does so much. Here comes the Moon Guys. Here comes the Madness. Is this a, this is an assault of a seismic total? No way. Here comes the Moon Guys. Oh, who who's getting the weather is the question. Cause you're knocking out my Feeny, right? All right, I knock out the seismic total. That's good. Ice screen. It's a tech move. Wait, Voltage, Dazzling Gleam, Light Screen. What's the last one? Okay. This benefits me immensely, though, because I'm menacing every slot now. <laughs> There's no re reason why I'm not going for Madness into every slot now. Okay. Uh, I don't get the Light Screen play at all. I don't. You go for damage, I think, if anything. Because Light Screen doesn't benefit you now. I go Groudon. Oh, but I'm low. So my opponent reads that. I'm screwed. Uh, I think I just go for a double up though into Kyogre just to put in Precipice Blaze range. I'm gonna Madness here. Like even if my uh, Feeny gets knocked out and Kyogre protects, it's fine. But it looks like my opponent's not, so I do get the madness off. My opponent wants pressure. I think maybe trying to catch a ground on an ice beam switch. Uh, but even if it goes for a water type move, I think I'm in a fine spot. Because I think Groudon can win the end game. Because I got the damage in Kyogre that puts it in Precipice Blades range 100%. Yeah, it goes for the ice beam read. Nice. Into the Lunala. Goes for Gleam. But now I can go for a wide guard. And as long as I hit one of my blades, I'll be fine. So here comes the Groudon, and I always wide guard here. I always click wide guard. The reason I always click wide guard here is because if Kyogre protects, I missed a Coco. At least Dazzling Gleam won't connect with my Groudon to put me into a potential range for Ice Beam. So we wide guard and Precipice Blades. And as long as we hit the one Precipice Blades we need, we should have this game. Kyogre gonna protect, which is fine. I'm not sure if the Coco's protecting, but that'd be fine too. Yeah, it protects, okay. So, so wow, this Coco didn't have like a good electric type move. It had Volt, which is his only electric type move. Wide guard. Cause I'm trying to avoid the gleam, cause that's the only way the Coco touches me. Um, 
you're probably gonna go for an electric type move in the Lunala anyway. But I can't risk you going for the Gleam Ice Beam and knocking out my Groudon. So I will go for the I will go for Presser's Blades always and Wide Guard. Because it just it's the safest play that I have here. So let's see. Volt Switch. It's fine. Please don't miss. If you hit the Kyogre, we win. Okay, so Nala. Just hit one at least this turn. Oh, we hit both. Okay. Nice. Alright, so we knock out the Kyogre. We knock out Coco. That is a good game. Oh, man. Nice. I just don't get that one light screen that one turn. The light screen, I felt like, did not help my opponent. Because if there, if my opponent actually attacked a Feeny and got the knockout on a Feeny, uh, what would have happened then is uh, Groudon's forced to come in and Kyogre's forced to come in. Since I think my Grout, since my Groudon was slower than the Kyogre, it's actually faster in Trick Room and then gets the Primal Reversion off. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Did my opponent reveal Kyogre? No, my opponent never revealed Kyogre, right? Okay, no, no, no. It's how I think it was. So, Primal Reversion would have went off for both sides. I would have Primal... I went through the Reversion first, which meant Growlon actually went through... Uh, would have activated its ability first, and then Kyogre resets it. So, I would have been put in a really poor position. Um, If it's Haskald. Yeah, if it has Haskald. Which I don't think we saw... No, we only saw Spout, right? Pretty sure we only saw Spow, but basically, I think it would have been pretty bad if it had Skull. Like that's the only move that could have affected that game. It's if it if the Kyra had Skulled, which could change the game, and then Mr. Pespa's Blades into the Kyogre, like that could have changed. That could have been really bad. Uh, but I, also we would actually we wouldn't even had the madness. To, no, we would. Yeah, actually no, we wouldn't have had the madness damage either into the. Kyogre slot. So that would have been a really poor position for us. I'm most surprised my opponent went for a light screen out of all plays. But my opponent had to... Attacking double was fine. Like, double attacking, I think, was fine. Because, like, if I protect and attack with one of my mons, I don't pick up a knockout, which is a thing. So, by me not picking up a knockout, it's a strange posi position for me. While, if you're able to get a knockout since you're on the trick room, my primal version goes off first. It actually is a big deal because of that ends up hurting me. But yeah, actually really surprised about that. But yeah, I think we're just going to cut it to the next battle because it's taking quite a while to find our second game. So we'll be right back with the second game of today's episode. All right, we got MJ for the United States as our second opponent. With a 14-43 right now, I think it was. But this is a pretty scary team. <laughs> the Luna is so scary. Um... I think Incineroar under Sun does really well, though, against my opponent's team. It's definitely a Pokemon I really like in this. So I think I'm going to bring the Incineroar. I think I'm going to bring Feeny, Lunala, and Groudon for sure. I think I'm going to lead Incineroar plus Lunala because it's a pretty good lead against my opponent's team. I don't see anything that's, like, super bad against it. I kind of like Stack Attack too. Stack Attack looks great, doesn't it? Sack Attacker looks great. Actually, do I not bring Lunala? Because, like, Lunala is actually not that great against my opponent, now that I think about it. Huh. I'm going to bring Incineroar Sack Attacker with Feeny Groudon in the back. Yeah, I like that a lot, actually. Because I like, I like having Sack Attacker's offensive presence against this team. Like, I think it does really well against this team. So, we'll see how it goes, but, yeah. All right. I like Sack Attacker. Like, Sack Attacker does well here. Uh, if I can get Trick Room up. I feel like Lunala just gets threatened by everything. Uh, that's AKA the Lunala on my opponent's side. <laughs> Alright, Top of Coco Salamence leads. As long as it's not Hydro Pump Mega Sal. If it's Hydro Pump Mega Salamence and my opponent goes out on the Kyogre, you got me good. You got me good. But I'm Trick Rooming turn one, and I'm going for the uh, Fake Out into Coco. Because I'm not risking Taunt or. AZ move. I'll risk Roar and Salamence over that. And Salamence, if it doesn't have Hydro Pump, uh, we should be in a good spot. So we'll fake out. And Trick Room. 
Then what do I want to do after that? If uh, my opponent just stays in, then I want to U-turn into Feeny. Yep. Okay. So I know what I want to do. Like I know what I want to do. We'll go for the fake out. We'll go for the uh, trick room here. <sighs> I just don't have Hydro Pump, Brick Break, or something crazy. Earthquake is fine. I don't think you would. Rev I don't know. Let's see. Fake out gonna come out in the cup of cocoa. Flinches. Tailwind. What? Against a stack attack? Okay. I mean, Tailwind's a good move. Just not in this situation, not against this lead. Alright, Chickum's up. You turning out. Jarballing the Coco on double protect, I'm guessing. I could hard switch into Feeny, which is definitely a play. But like. Maybe hard switching to Feeny is better because I get more offensive presence. Yeah, switching hard into Feeny, I think, was better. Hmm. Yeah, I, I like the hard switching to Feeny better. Salamence protects. Let's see if Coco protects too, which I'm guessing it will. No, it doesn't actually. So, Gyro Ball into the type of Coco. Does that pick up a knockout? No, it doesn't. Will you turn? I don't think it will. I think it's going to be shy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we go Feeny here because I can't go Groudon yet. I'm probably take at least this will prevent Stack Attacker from going down to a Z move as well. I don't think your Electric type moving the Incineroar unless it's Volt Switch. Dazzling Gleam. That's a really curious choice for the move option there. I just don't see any reason to keep the Z-move. The Z-move doesn't help me in this game. I'm going to go for the Z-move there and Gyro Ball. Because I don't need Z-Rock in this game. It doesn't help me at all. I'd rather just click Gyro Ball most of the time anyway. And I either want to guarantee the knockout Salamence. Because I don't know if Moonblast would KO the Salamence. Because it really depends on the Salamence spread. And like whatever comes in. Nothing really appreciates the Z-move. Like Cinnabar doesn't appreciate it. Uh, Cortana doesn't appreciate it. There's the Kyogre, which is going to take a decent amount from it. What was the other Pokemon that could switch in? Lunala, which breaks the Shadow Shield, so I'm fine. Yeah, Lunala going to come in. Okay. Uh, video's kind of chopping up now. Uh, Tapu Koko into Kyogre. Okay. I mean, this is a fine spot. I kind of basically just got a lot of damage off regardless. Yeah, I think it's because my computer's been on a while, for a while, so the video's chopping up. Yeah. Alright, uh, hopefully everyone can deal with it for the next few turns. We'll get a jar ball off into the Kyogre for some chip. And we'll break the Lunar Shadow Shield. Um, next turn. I feel like minus one gyro ball will still do a lot to Lunala. Like it does a lot of damage. Unless it was a trick on Lunala in the first place, then I guess it changes. But as long as I'm getting chip on everything, I think I'm good. Is it worth for me to double up the Lunala slot with gyro ball? I don't think it is though. And Moonblast, I don't think it is. I'm gonna gyro ball here. No, no, not the Kyogre. I wanted Lunala. Well, I accidentally made that mistake. I mean, it's not too bad because there's a chance Kyra switches out to uh, preserve the weather. But yeah, Lunala is more of the threat. Alright. Power of it with Groudon. Get the desolate land. Gyro will come out in the Kyogre. Goes for Thunder. Oh wow, that actually made my play look like a good play. Okay. Well, no, I did make that one on purpose. I didn't gyro ball the uh, thing on purpose. I always feel like it lo looks so cool when Lunala goes for Moon Guys Beam under Sun. Like I think it looks so cool. Yeah, when Peter's out. Yeah. I'm definitely up to Lunala. I'm just hoping for no protect on the Lunala and the Thunder into the stack attacker, which would be the worst case situation, I guess. 
I feel like it's still a winnable game. Like, we've gotten a lot of damage into my opponent. And Kyogre protecting is excellent for me. Where's it double? No, it's not even double protects. So I get the K on Lunala, which is excellent. Ooh, that Dragon Ball does a lot. I'm on a Fire Punch just in case A, Salamence comes in. B, I don't want Wide Guard or to miss. All right, so Trigger returns to normal. Let's see what my opponent brings out. Probably the Coco. No, Coco's a. We I feel like there's no safe play for my opponent. I feel like you have to go Coco, and switch out Kyogre in a. Sa it's just really hard to position, right? Because I could sack my uh, stack attacker to get Trick Room up. Salamence is gonna come out. I think my best play is just to go Ins and then protect though, and try to get another Trick Room up if possible. Because I could fake out the Kyogre the following turn and then Trick Room up. And as long as this Salamence doesn't have Brick Break or Earthquake, we should be fine. We haven't revealed anything about the Salamence other than Tailwind. And I think we saw Protect. I'm not exactly too sure. So, we're not in a bad, bad spot. But it could be more ideal. Did we knock? No, we knocked out Lunala just now. So, Coco's still in the back at like 1 HP. Yeah, Kyrie retreats. Up a Coco. Okay, that's fine. So we'll get instant in, and then we can go for a fake out into Trick Room the next turn. Hopefully. Uh, we still don't know what the Salamence has, if it has like a tech move uh, that can help in the situation. There's no Protect coming out from the stack, from the uh, Salamence. It tailings again? Why? Okay, I just don't, I don't get that Tailwind. We already pr proved that Tailwind was view dial. Trick Room. Fake out. Hmm. I just don't. <laughs> okay. Uh, maybe my opponent thinks that Tailwind is usually the best move. I mean, I don't know. Coco gonna hard retreat, which is a good play because um, Kyogre getting in is actually pretty good for my opponent. It's better than Coco staying on the field and doing nothing. Let's see. What does the Salamence do? Does it have attack? No, it just protects. So I can go for U-turn into Kyogre the following turn and just Gyro Ball to Salamence. And I like that play a lot because there's not much my opponent can really do about it. Like this stack attack is going to go in. Even at minus one, it's doing damage. U-turn, Gyro Ball. At this rate, Phoenix should be able to win the game if I just get rid of the... Uh... Salamence and the well, there's a lot of things that can win. Groudon can win if I get rid of the Salamence. Um, Feeny can win if I'm able to get rid of the Coco and intimidate the men's. Um, what else can win? Well, they're on the field, so I think we're fine. Here comes a gyro ball into the Salamence, which does half, which is impressive. Here comes the U turn. I want to say that's Fire Punch range, thanks to that crit. I think I would click Fire Punch either way, but let's see. I will go Groudon here. It's the best play. Watch that Ice Beam Hyper Beam come out from my opponent. Would that change the game, though? I really don't think it would. Because I think I just get a Gyroball Moonblast off the following turn. Warrior Impulse is going to come out. It can't work in the sun. And Draco Meteor coming out. Okay. It does have my met my uh, ground on slot though, so that's gonna do some damage. That really he didn't do too much though. Okay. We'll fire punch the grout the Kyogre here and just jar ball the mints. We should be able to pick up a KO unless my opponent goes for a double protect. 
And then next turn, I can still go for the same play, and there's really not much my opponent can do to punish it. Like, this game, I feel like our stack attack has been put in pretty good positions. No protects either, so should be able to pick up the knockout into Salamence and the uh, Gyro and the Fire Punch. Should knock out the Kyogre, and if it doesn't, I'm still in a really good spot, because um, I don't think Crit Ice Beam should knock out my uh, Groudon. So Fire Punch... Yeah, it knocks out Kyogre. So we're going to be able to win the game nice because the Tapu Koko alone cannot beat down the rest of my team. So, nice, nice, nice. Um, All right, so we're able to pick up a win against my opponent. I feel like maybe my opponent got more damage off early in the match with the uh, Salamence instead of going for Tailwind. Maybe my opponent would have been in a better spot. But overall, we were just able to get trick him up pretty safely. There wasn't really much my opponent could do against... Uh, me once Trick Room was up because like there wasn't really a best way to stall out Trick Room. So yeah. Match is going to be forfeit. We are going to be able to take, pick up a win and not bad. So that is how we're going to conclude today's episode of VGC 2019 Back to Balance. Hope that you enjoyed today's episode of VGC 2019 Back to Balance. If you did enjoy it, please leave a like down below. Show support. So you can check out the rest of my stuff down below in the description. Such as my social media, the side saves on my channel, and all that good stuff. I will be resetting my computer, so hopefully there won't be too much lag in the next episode. If you did like it, though, uh, and want to support it, share it with your friends and leave a comment down below. But otherwise, you can check out Nioto's Twitter down below in the description if you want to go give him a follow. As well as you can also uh, check out the team report if you want in the description down below as well. You can... Uh, if you want to go an extra mile to support my content, there is my Patreon page and my Twitch channel. But otherwise, I think that's pretty much it. I'm going to reset my computer. Have a great day, people. Until we battle again, I'll catch you all later.